Welcome in, everybody, to the week six recap. Six weeks in the book. Well, we have one more game for week six, but almost six weeks in the books. Uh, and Dad, what do you what do you uh, make of this week? Kind of a crazy, un, um, you know, this week we couldn't predict what happened. Uh, no one predicted what was going to happen this week. No more undefeated teams. Um, six weeks in. So, what, what, what do you make of this uh, overall this week? Yeah, there was. Um... Is you know there were some significant injuries um, on you know not only quarterbacks and things like that and um, I mean there was some uh, Philadelphia lost one of their main offensive linemen and um, you know Justin Fields you know we got uh, his his issue and there's just uh, Trevor Lawrence maybe you know that type of stuff so I mean. There was some, yeah, there was uh, the, the weather. The weather was slightly an issue. I, I don't think it was, it was you know, as significant. But, yeah, there was, um, there was some funny games, that's for sure. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah, it's just one of those weeks that remind you, uh, no matter how much you think you know, you don't really know that much. And also it reminds you of um, just how close I think all NFL teams are. Like, I, I know we think there's this huge gap between the, the best and the worst team, but uh, especially in like September, October, there, there really isn't a huge gap between these teams. I mean, we saw it with the Browns beating the 49ers with PJ Walker and the Jets beating the Eagles and, you know, even the Bills with, um, with, uh, or the Giants with Tyrod Taylor were, you know, one play away from beating the Bills, you know? So, like, um, it, it just makes you realize, like, yeah, the, the, the difference between Team 1 and Team 32 is not that far off, really. And you get a few injuries for teams, and it really um, brings these teams a lot closer together and stuff like that. So, um, for fantasy, it wasn't that great of a week. I mean, I think um, there was, like, there was like a couple quarterbacks that scored over 20 points, but there wasn't that like there was hardly any quarterbacks that did anything this week. Um, so it was kind of reflective in the fantasy scores unless you had one of those guys. But as always, we're here to kind of recap um, the week. We're going to go over six games in this video, seven more in another. And uh, yeah, we're just going to get kick it off right away with the uh, the London, the last London game, the Ravens and the Titans. Um Dad, we had another week of the of the Ravens just kind of not looking all there. I mean, uh, Lamar Jackson, you know, threw for over 200, a touchdown, ran for over 60, so he was fine for fantasy. Um, but the offense just doesn't seem to be clicking. Mark Andrews was fine for a tight end, but he's not, you know, he hasn't been what you kind of drafted him for in the round two or three to be that difference maker. Zay Flowers caught his first touchdown, which is good to see. Not a whole lot of fantasy production on the Ravens side, just – I don't know. Like, I, I'm sure you watched this game. It was a, you know, a standalone game. So it just doesn't seem to be clicking. I don't know what it is. Do you have any, any type of explanation for, is it the new offensive coordinator or, or what is it? Yeah. Well, that's who I would throw the blame on. Um, Cause we've seen, we've seen, um, we've seen Lamar, you know, under the previous uh, offensive coordinator, the offense looked pretty good, you know. Um, also, you know, it's just, I guess, the lack of um, lack of a a how do I want to say it? A significant ground game, I think. Um, I think kind of hurts, you know. They they still get, you know, Gus Edwards had 16 carries, but you know, he wasn't. He only averaged 2.6 yards a carry, so I mean that's Justice Hill eight carries. So, but as far as Baltimore, man, it just um, you're you're right. You know, like it just it doesn't it doesn't look right, or it doesn't look like what we've been, you know, we've seen in the past where where it looked dynamic and everything else, and it's just kind of blah, you know. Yeah, it's almost like they're trying to make Lamar a little bit more into like a pocket passer. And, and I understand it to a certain extent, but also it's just like 
the guy is special because of his legs. And uh, but even even Lamar, like there's there's certain plays where he's he's running, and it seems like a couple years ago he would have just like busted off a 60 yard run, but now they're he's he's going down on like first contact. You know, just doesn't seem maybe as explosive as he was a couple years ago. So I don't know. Like he's still obviously he's going to give you if he's going to give you 60 yards on the ground, like he's fine for fantasy and he's good for fantasy. And yeah, the running backs, you know, we talked about it last week. We don't really want to start these guys um, unless we really have to. We, we kind of lead Justice Hill, I think, but um, neither one did anything really. Justice Hill did have three catches for zero yards. <laughs> so uh, that doesn't help. I mean, unless you play PPR, uh, yeah. but you know, it, they're just neither one. Maybe Gus Edwards is going to get enough carries, but in terms of their usage, Gus Edwards was used on the goal line, which is kind of flipped from what it was um, last week. It was Justice Hill. So I don't know. It just seems like I want to avoid these guys as much as possible. But we do have a huge bye week coming up, so maybe you have to start them. You know, again, I think another thing is, like, I think we overrated the wide receiver core for this team a little bit. We're thinking, like, oh, Odell Beckham, Rashad Bateman. Zay Flowers has been good, but... Um, Bateman has been terrible. Odo Beckham is a shell of himself. Non, like, non-existent, man. Just totally. Yeah. Uh, I thought OBJ would be something, and you know, I got, I got sucked into that idea. Rashad Bateman, a former uh, first-round draft pick, that guy hasn't done squat. You yeah. know, I'm not sure. I'm sure everybody's going to point the finger. Well, it's not me, you know, and that, that type stuff. And um, yeah. You know, Tennessee, Tennessee, it's kind of sorry to see. Um, I think Tennessee, I like their coach. I like the way they play football. Um, I'm sorry, Ryan Tannehill. I know he got injured and stuff like that. And it's just, it's not happening. Uh, Derrick Henry had almost 100 yards, but two-thirds of that came on one play. So, you know, a 60-some yard uh run i mean he looked looked pretty good but after that you know deandre hopkins what the hell's going on there and there's another um yeah it's i mean when you pass for 150 yards total like you're not going to get much performance out of anyone in the passing game like and 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 50 of those yards was on one one catch by tajay spears yeah to a running back yeah no kidding so you had 100 yards outside of that that play yeah it's just not it is unfortunate to see because I agree with you. I'm kind of like we we do our our, our um, football pool, and I always have like a lean towards the Titans. I think like good coach. They're just going to keep the game close and they're going to make it tough. But and, and maybe they will. But it just doesn't seem to be happening this year. Like Ryan Tannehill, his injury looks pretty bad. I think they're on a bye week next week, so we'll, we'll see in a couple weeks what it looks like. But Malik Willis supposedly, didn't look great. Supposedly he had a. It was a foot problem, and it's a foot or an ankle. Sorry, an ankle, and he's had it surgically repaired, like last year. So that's, yeah. you know, that yeah. kind of makes me, you know, if you're if you're having to play Ryan Tannehill, you know, you're you're kind of sucking ass already, and now now it's even worse, you know. Yeah, yeah, they might they might go to Will Levis. I don't know. Maybe they stick with Malik Jeez. Willis, like. He didn't look great. He kind of looked like, I know he looked better in preseason, but a lot of people looked good in preseason that haven't looked good in the regular season. So yeah, it's, it's tough and it's tough. Like if you can kind of sell high on Derrick Henry, I feel like I would, especially if, if Tannehill is going to be out, even though Tannehill's hasn't been playing great, he can still control an offense, I guess. Like we, we don't know what we're going to get from these other two guys. Um, you know, so yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's tough in the streets for um, for the Ravens Titans. Not much to really talk about in terms of like any beyond the box score stuff. So um, we'll just kind of move on to uh, our next game here, uh, which is the uh, the Commanders at the Falcons. Um, two interesting interesting teams. I think um, we'll start with the with the Commanders. Um, Sam Howell looks good. Like he's he's in that. If you need a starter because your quarterback's on by in the next coming up weeks, like I would target Sam Howell. Like three, he threw for three touchdowns, only threw for 150 yards, but you know you don't care if you get three touchdowns. He could give you stuff on the ground. Um, the Brian Robinson experiment has kind of, or you know, he was 
he was out going off the first two, three weeks, like perfect example of potentially trying to sell high on guys. Like if you go back every year and you look at the top five running backs after three weeks, it's, it makes you laugh a little bit. Um, you know, Brian Robinson's probably going to fall into that category. He did catch a touchdown, so he didn't kill you, but, um, you know, he, he's not giving you the, what he, it was giving you the first few weeks. I think Terry McLaurin had a good game, six for 81, man. Jahan Dotson is just like, he had one target, no catches. It's like, what, what is going on? I don't know. Like, is he just not good? Is, is this just like the chiefs offense of the, of the East or something where they just kind of spread the ball around and I don't know. Logan Thomas was a disappointment after, you know, what happened there? He gets one target. It's like, it was, I don't even know how to explain it. It's like this team was target. I think they had the most targets to tight ends in the NFL. The Falcons were one of the worst teams against the tight ends. And then Logan Thomas comes in and gives you one target after probably a lot of people started them. So uh, that's unfortunate. Hey, anything that on the on the commander side like I, I think we've already kind of moved on from Jahan Dotson at this point right <clears throat> yeah you've you've pretty much um kind of laid it out there you know it's kind of um even though they won the game you know fantasy wise um it's it was a little it was a little a little ugly you know it's nice to see Sam Howell you know um kind of producing something and um and McLaurin he's to me he's a guy I would always start but um you know everybody else is a coin flip man yeah yeah it's unfortunate I think Curtis Samuel like you, you might need to start thinking about adding him like um I think he has a touchdown in three straight games second on the team in targets you know he gets he gets carries um at least one or two a game so he, he might be a guy that that's worth adding. Like he's, he's producing, like, I know we don't like it. Cause I think a lot of us liked Johan Dotson kind of going in, um, into the year, you know, second year rookie or second year player who, who looked good as a rookie, but Curtis Samuel has uh, he's wide receiver 25 on the year. Again, in half PPR three straight double digit points a uh, week. So he's a, he's a guy to potentially add, uh, especially with all these injuries and, and I think six teams on a bye this coming this this week in week seven. So, um, Falcon side Ritter Falcons they threw the ball forty seven times. We actually saw a game. I think this might be the first game ever where Drake London and Kyle Pitts were were really good for fantasy. Drake <laughs> London had one hundred one hundred twenty five yards on nine catches. Kyle Pitts had four catches, forty three yards, and a touchdown. Um, I th- it might be the first one ever that we've seen both of them kind of go off. Um, uh, Bijan, are you disappointed at this point, Dad? If you if you drafted Bijan, which you did in one of our leagues as um, you know the the running back one, are you disappointed with with Bijan? He's RB ten on the year. Um, were you expecting yeah. a little bit more, like a top five guy? You can you can kind of see it. You know he has the ability. It's just right. um, I don't know, man. It it, it is a little disappointment disappointment are we you know he's consistently i don't know 10 12 maybe 15 points mm-hmm. you know i mean or we're waiting for the big explosion game or something like that into the 20s but um you know that so it's just not it's not there and maybe maybe it's maybe you know maybe it's the falcons offense or something maybe it's um you know, he, Desmond Ritter threw for over 300 yards, but um, he had three interceptions. So maybe they're going to go back to featuring the, uh, the, run the game. ground game a little more or something. But um, yeah, I mean, Bijan's always going to be involved in the passing game. And again, like we're not talking about Bijan hasn't been bad. He has five of the six weeks. He has double digit points. Three of those weeks over 15 points. Um, the last two weeks he's been under he's been under um, eleven, and then he has an eight point week. So like, you know, he hasn't been a, a bust or anything. It's just like I think when you drafted him, you're expecting a top three guy, and we just haven't seen you know we haven't seen a twenty point game in half PPR. And you know, Tyler, like I understand like not wanting to overwork Bijan and and um, you know, Arthur Smith kind of mentioned that before the game, but at the same time, it's like 
Is Tyler Algier really deserve as many carries, the same amount of carries as as Bijan? Like, and then even in the goal line, they haven't been at the around the goal line a whole lot, but they're using Algier more than they are Bijan. Um, in, in from what I'm seeing, you know, in that two point conversion where they needed that two point conversion to to pull within six, uh, it was Tyler Algier that they gave the ball to, and not Bijan. It's just a little bit like, come on, like, are you? It's like he's afraid to use these top talents or something. I don't know. Um, but if they are going to throw this much and Ritter's going to be able to throw for 300 yards, like, you know, Kyle Pitts, Drake London, they're both, um, both kind of starters, like back to, to no brainer starters, you know, uh, despite what we think of Kyle Pitts, he's uh tight end 12 on the year, you know? So, um, it doesn't take much to get there and he's had two 12 point weeks. So um, yeah, he caught a touchdown too. Yep. Yep. So that's good to see. Um, yeah, not much else there to talk about. So we'll move on to the um, the Seahawks at the uh, Bengals. Um, Bengals pull out the win. Uh, it was a close game. Not a not a whole lot of offensive scoring. Are we concerned about the Seahawks? Um, uh, more more about Geno Smith, I guess. Like I know he threw for over three hundred yards, but two interceptions, no touchdowns. Like it just went. Are we, we, we're not getting the passing game as what we had last year, throwing the ball deep, um, you know, not scoring touchdowns. Are we kind of uh, concerned a little bit about this offense? I don't think so. I mean, maybe if you're a Seahawks fan, but if we're talking, you know, we're talking fantasy football. So, I mean – you're still going to get production from these guys. And um, they seem, you know, Lockett had a pretty good game. Kenneth Walker, I mean, he was um, kind of uh, very close to breaking one, a very long run away. And, um, and um, where, where I'm disappointed at is, you know they're not they're not using the rookies they got Charbonneau and and Jackson Smith and Jedba you know as as much so they were sticking with with Lockett DK Metcalf uh, man I don't know man there's um had ten targets and four receptions so it's like makes me a little nervous but um yeah Gino Gino didn't he didn't have a great game but. I don't know if I'm I'm not I'm not moving off of them, that's for sure. I mean, you kind of need them, at least since your quarterback goes on a bye or um or something like that. So um, you know, he did throw for 320 yards, which you know, Tyler Lockett had uh his best game of the year, six for ninety-four. You mentioned Kenneth Walker. Yeah, he's just getting the volume, like 19 carries, 62 yards, you're not happy with, but he got a touchdown. Um, and you know, he had three catches for 27 yards, so he's um if you took the chance on him, you got him at a you got him at a bargain in, in your drafts. He's RB seven on the week, and he's already had his buy. Not many not many teams have had their buy um, that that's including. So in terms of average, he's up there. I think like RB five. So um, yeah, he's he's looking really good. Uh, yeah, you mentioned it with JSN. Something I will note though, um, you know they had a buy last week, and uh, they can't usually you come out of buys and. You know, at least the what everyone says is like the rookies get more uh, playing time. I, I actually want to go back and look if, if that's even true. But JSN did have um, the most snaps he's played all year long, the most routes run. is actually the most receiving yards all year long. So it's not, you know, it's not start worthy in fantasy football. But um, you know, he he did get up to seventy uh, percent. I think seventy five percent of the team snaps just below it. So they ran more um, three wide receiver sets. Um, so that that's something to keep an eye on. Like I would still hold on to him if you can. I know again it's hard to when there's all these injuries and bye weeks, but if you can hold on to him because I think he he still could break out. Um, he he still could, especially if one of these guys get injured. So um, yeah, nothing else of note. You know, no offense. I was starting to get excited about a little bit because he was not excited, but like oh, I can stream him as a tight end because he was actually doing okay but not in this game one catch for nine yards so um yeah it was just kind of a whatever type of game for for the bangle uh for the seahawks um on the bangle side like is joe burrow back i don't know like he had a good game against arizona 
kind of a mediocre game again. He threw two touchdowns, but a little bit of a mediocre game here. Like, um, I don't know, Dad. Are you are you just? It, it can't. He has to get. He, he must be getting healthier, right? Like, I think that's the biggest well, thing we need to turn our hats on. Yeah, I think so. You know, it's. Um, I don't know if you can blame it on health. I mean, I think the Bengals all they care about. And Joe Burrow says this, you know, that they win. You know, yeah. we we as fantasy uh, players and fantasy managers and stuff like that, you know, we're looking for a little bit more. So his yards per throw like ultra low. So a um, lot of lot of um, yeah, a lot of Jenkins and Duncan. It sounds like yeah. Yeah, and I, I kind of agree with you. I don't, just from what I saw, I didn't watch the entire game. From what I saw from it, it didn't feel like it, this was a poor performance of Burrow due to the injury. Um, it just kind of felt like it was just one of those games where, you know, maybe Seattle's a little bit tougher of a defense than we think. Um, definitely a better team, you know, a pretty good team. Um, so I think it was just kind of a bad game. You know, T. Higgins was a disappointment if you started him, but he was coming back from an injury, so it was a risk. Joe Mixon, you know, he does get uh, like 60 total yards, but uh, that's it. No touchdowns or anything. Like, he's just not very explosive. Like, he needs volume, and if he gets volume, he's going to give you 11 to 15 points, you know? If he doesn't get the volume, though, he's going to get game. He, like, he's not... Kenneth Walker, where he can bust off a 60 yard run. Like, I don't even remember last time I've seen Mixon run for, you know, a play like for 40 yards or something. Like, it doesn't, he, he always gets a lot of goal line carries and gets stuffed. Like, yeah, he's just not as, not as explosive as I guess I thought um, he was. But again, he's going to get the volume, should be a better offense um, overall. So, um, you know, you're still going to start him. He's still a top 20 running back. Uh, Jamar Chase, you know, six for 80. It was fine. But, um, yeah, it would be nice to see. I think the Bengals have one more one more game until their bye week. I'm just double-checking. E no, they have a bye week this week. Yeah, so, you know, I think they're happy. If you're a Bengals fan, you're happy. You got three and three with Joe Burrow playing on one leg for basically the first six weeks. They get their bye week and – you know, so hopefully you can kind of get healed up, right? I think that's what you're excited about there. Uh, anything else for this game that I missed? Any injury? I know DK Metcalf left with an injury but came back. Uh, I don't think there was any other injury stuff here. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll move on uh, to our next game, the, uh, the Colts at the Jags. Um, man, just another game, like... It's kind of interesting because, like, the Jags are putting up points. Well, let's start with the Colts. Gardner Minshew did not look good. Um, three interceptions. He threw for over 300 yards, but three interceptions didn't look good at all. Um, Zach, the Zach Moss, Jonathan Taylor situation, like, you're a little frustrated if you've been starting Jonathan Taylor in the last couple of weeks. It was basically a split, um, essentially a split backfield. It was 37... Um, snaps for for zach moss 31 for jonathan taylor and um one two two where they were both out there so it was essentially um a split backfield do you think dad this is going to become more of like a 70 30 jonathan taylor over the next week or two you know <clears throat> yeah it, it's kind of funny just just on this game you know before i answer your question um you know that they they didn't feature the running game no. is is heavy you know we we think that, you know we think the Colts is you know a run heavy team of course and um even with Anthony Richardson uh, in there and my god uh, Minshew 329 yards so something uh something different was going on here yeah they're going to lean to they're going to lean to Taylor uh, he had a he had a big pass play in one of his um, receptions where he it was like 40 yards. And so, um, and he, I mean, he looked, I didn't watch the game, but I, you know, I watched 
highlights and stuff like that. And he looks really good. So, mm -hmm. so I think, you know, now we're starting to see it. It's going to, we're going to trend towards uh, Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. I I'd hope so. Yeah. I mean, you see like 11 catches between Jonathan Taylor and Zach Moss is really, you're really excited about that. If, if Jonathan Taylor can ever get to being the main guy, it's like, oof. Like if, if Gardner Minshew is going to dump the ball off that much, like that's, they did throw it 55 times. I don't think they're going to want to do that. Yeah, I, I think you, uh, so for Zach Moss then, are you just starting him until you see that he's not as involved basically? Because if you benched him the last two weeks, you've been disappointed because he's put up two really good weeks. Um, he put up 32 points in, in week five, even 15 points this week because he had a touchdown. So like, are you just going to keep starting them until you see that it's 70, 30 or. Yeah, I would, um, I, I definitely would, uh, I, I would keep on starting them, you know, until you, until you see a significant drop off, you know, right now we didn't, we didn't see a significant drop. We seen a slight drop off yesterday. I mean, if you look at the way this game kind of went out, uh, I mean, the reason the Colts threw 55 times is they were behind, you know, um, Jacksonville was kind of laying it on them pretty good. You know, it was like 30, I think it was 31 to six at one time going into near the third or fourth, going into the fourth quarter. So, um, so of course the Colts are going to have to throw They're you know, they're going to want to play catch up and stuff like that. So some of those, some of those um, Minshew throws could come in garbage time and stuff like that, which is irrelevant to us in fantasy, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is. Um, Michael Pittman, nine for 109. Like, again, I, I think with Anthony Richardson, you were going to get a lot of inconsistent games from Pittman. Uh, I think with Minshew, you're going to get more games like these than then uh, I think you're very excited if you have Michael Pittman. Um, he's wide receiver 16 on the year. Um, he's had three really good games, two okay games, one bus game. Uh, and and Minshew is just going to be more, a little bit more consistent for, for Michael Pittman. Um, you know, Josh Downs even had – he had eight targets on five, five – only five catches for 21 yards, but I think he had a touchdown. So um, I think if you have uh, – you know, pick up Josh Downs and uh, add him on your team if he's still out there on waiver wire because I think he's going to be pretty good. So um, I think that's kind of it for this game. Uh, or sorry, for this, uh, for the Colts side on the Jags side. Yeah, it's like another game of like the Jags put up 37 points. Trevor Lawrence didn't have a great fantasy game. Like I know I've, I've been hearing a lot of people saying like he's played better than his numbers show and I, I kind of believe that. But at some point we're going to be like, Who's it? it falls on him a little bit, right? Like at some point, uh, he hasn't had a game over 19, 19 or more points. Um, he's had four straight weeks of 15 and a half points or 15 and a half points essentially is what he had the, the last four weeks. Are you, are you worried about Trevor Lawrence dad ever being the, the guy you know, that I, least, I, like, go ahead. I, yeah, no, I think the expectations you know, based upon the second half of last year and the playoff performance of the Jags and, and Trevor Lawrence, I think everybody, you know, was expecting, okay, he, he's going to the Peyton Manning level or he's going to the next level. Things seemed like they were in place. Wide receivers, running backs, you know, coach, stuff like that, you know, so... Have we have we seen him going to the next level yet? Uh, I don't think so. But yeah. you know, they scored 37 points. I don't know if they were all offense or if there was any defensive touchdowns or anything like that. You know, I mean, they scored three touchdowns in the second half, or I'm sorry, in the second period. So I mean, does that? Obviously, the game was in hand. They lay off a little bit, um, you know, so maybe maybe that skews the numbers. 
Uh, we did see Trevor Lawrence get um, get dinged up. I think he his he was kind of limping on a knee, so that's something to pay attention to. Yeah, he's having a, uh, having an MRI, I believe, and he was out like on the field shaking hands afterwards. So that maybe that's a good sign. I don't know, but um, yeah, monitor that. But I, I don't know. It is disappointing, and you know, I, I was always born. I wasn't completely buying into the the Jacksonville explosion that everyone was and again you mentioned based on the second half it wasn't even really the second half it was it was like a five game stretch where he looked good that's kind of it for his career at this point but he gets a he gets passes he gets a pass because he was the number one overall pick and the greatest prospect since since Andrew Luck and then his first year was like oh it was Urban Meyer's fault and like he's been kind of getting these passes like would you take CJ Stroud in Dynasty would you take CJ Stroud or, or Trevor Lawrence right now I think I'd take uh I like I like the makeup of Jackson Jacksonville's team, you know, their playmakers and stuff like that. Um I think there's it just seems like there's more there's more options on Jacksonville than there would be on Houston. So I gotta stick with Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, it's close though, because I I mean CJ Stroud's done things that Lawrence Lawrence hasn't done in, in two and a half years, you know? Like in his first six games. So I think it's closer than than I think uh, we all think. Um, Travis Etienne again, like I I was completely wrong about him in, in terms of his usage. Like I didn't think they were going to give him. I thought Tank Bigsby is going to be a little more involved. And no, nope, it's it's all Etienne. And yeah, if you if you draft an Etienne, you're you're super happy. I'm just going to double check where he's at um, in terms of his fantasy rankings. He has to be. Yeah, he's he's running back three on the year. So. Um, yeah, you're you're excited about him. What about Calvin Ridley? Like, man, he did yeah. lead the team in targets, but only four catches for 30 yards. Like, what are we doing with Ridley? Are we just gonna continue to throw him out there? Like, he's had he's had two good, two really good weeks, one fine week, and then three uh, bust weeks. Um, and again, it kind of all ties into like Trevor Lawrence is not putting up the numbers. This Jacksonville offense passing game, at least, is not really putting up the numbers. So. Do you think they're going to turn it around? And are you just going to continue to start Ridley? Yeah, well, you got to continue to start him based upon where you probably drafted him in the, uh, what, third or fourth round or something, you know, that, in other words, here's here's the preseason hype. You know, we kind of outsmart ourselves. You know, we, we knew, we knew, like me and you, we talked about the layoff you know, how significant it was. And my God, we haven't seen people come back from, you know, a year, a year plus layoff and just, you know, acting like Michael Jordan or something like that. It's just like, uh, and that's, that's kind of the case here. He looks good. If, you know, physically, you know, he, and it's just, maybe they're not getting it to him yet. So maybe there's more to come. Maybe there's a bigger explosion coming. But um, right now, you just got to roll with what you got. You, like you said, he did he did get eight targets, so they're trying to get the ball to him. You know, it just wasn't happening. Yeah. Um, and another thing that we mentioned was, like, why is everyone um, downgrading Christian Kirk? Like, like why, why are we disrespecting Christian Kirk? And um, he's wide receiver 18 on the year. And when you take out his um, – his really bad week one where he had one and a half points. He's um, he's wide receiver 12 from week two. So he's been really good. Now we haven't seen Zay Jones only in that one week one. We've only seen Zay Jones out there in week one. So it'd be interesting to see when he, if he does come back, what it looks like. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's um, Christian Kirk's kind of the man. I think he's the number one receiver for this team, you know? Um, and I'm disappointed in myself because drafted Ridley in our in our redraft league, and I, I was kind of not buying into the hype all off season, all the way up until that draft. And say, you know what? I'm going to take a chance. You know, it, it helps when you have you have several teams, and you can uh, you can do be a little more flexible with who you draft. But yeah, um, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. He still, again, still did lead the team in targets. So um, next up we have the panthers we have two more games for you panthers dolphins coming up next 
Um, Panthers put up a little bit of fight at the beginning of this game. It was like, oh, Panthers are up 14 to nothing. Like, what's going on? And then, you know, Miami just did Miami things. Um, you know, Miles Sanders missed the game. And, and if you started Chuba Hubbard, you're happy. He had 19 carries for 88 yards and a touchdown. Um, you know, only one catch. But um, that is, is Chuba Hubbard the best running back on this team the rest of the season? Or is it still Miles Sanders? Um, the way it's trending right now, I'd say, you know, San something's not right with Sanders. I know it started in the preseason with, um, I think, a groin injury. You know, he didn't really do anything in the preseason. Then all of a sudden he's in the lineup. Well, that's not working out. So I think I'd be, I think I'd be leaning towards Chuba. Yeah. Yeah, and he's he's looked good like in his career. He averaged four and a half yards a carry, four point six yards a carry. I think his career is right around that. So yeah, he's looked good. I mean, you're not super excited about starting a running back on this team just because the offense is not great, but um except for Adam Thielen, man, he's wide receiver four on the year. Um here's his you know, he had a he had a dud, he had a two catch, two target week one game. But since then, um the dude's been ridiculous. He's had, um, trying to look at it here, since week two, here, here's his pace. He has, he has 47 catches. Um, so that would be 160 catches on the year. Yeah, he has five 500 yards. In, so you're talking about 1,700 yards and, and four touchdowns. You're talking about like 160 catches. 1700 yards and like uh 16 17 touchdowns is what he's he's on, on pace since week two that's insane. better play him better play him yeah would you those are huge man those are huge ass numbers yeah it's ridiculous you know he's again wide receiver four on the year like would you because he's older and you're worried about injuries would you try to cash out on him dad and and see if you can get like like if someone were to give you, I don't know, I'm trying to like Amara St. Brown or something. Someone were to give well, you. Well, yeah, of course. I mean, you know, to that level. If not, you know, um, I have a dynasty team that I drafted last year, and I drafted Adam Thielen, and he sat on the bench the whole damn year last year, and and you know, of course, I think you know, do I need to get rid of this guy? You know, bring some rookies in and. Luckily, I still got him, and you know now he's producing. So I mean, that's just <clears throat> that's a freaking roll of the dice, you know. It. What's crazy about it is, is last. It's not like oh, we slept on him because he came off it. You know, he had an injured year last year, and we just disrespected him because of his age. He played in 17 games last year. He was on a team that I think was second in pass attempts. They threw the ball second most in the NFL, and he only put up 70 catches for 700 yards. And six touchdowns. So, you, so the logic is, all right, he just came from Kirk, having Kirk Cousins on his team, you know, his as his quarterback. They threw the ball like 750 times. He played in every game and he only did this. Now he's going to a rookie quarterback. They're not going to throw the ball as much. He has to, like, that has to be his ceiling. And I don't know, it just doesn't, it's a perfect example of like football and fantasy football just like not really making sense because it's like, where did this come from? So, yeah, I mean, just keep riding it out unless you can really, really cash out on him. Um, and that's about it for the Panthers. Uh, you know, the Dolphins side, not much you really need to know. Tua is awesome. Raheem Mostert's awesome. Um, Tyreek Hill's awesome. Jalen Waddle, like, you might not get the huge spike games you got last year, but, you know, seven for 51 and the touchdown, just because he's on this offense, you're going to continue to start him. So I don't know if there's really anything you want to talk about the Dolphins, Dad. It's just. No, um, no just. Um... Look on your waiver wire for Jeff Wilson. You know he'll be he'll be coming back, and um, you, you know he'll you know if you're gonna need a if you're gonna need a running back or something like that, so they they use them. They 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 know the running game. Mike McDaniel's coach, so that'd be what I would say on this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and to that point, like they still, um, you know, they gave. Um, Ahmed and, and Chris Brooks, um, they gave them 24 snaps. 
um, to, to Raheem Mostert, 34. They don't want to use one running back, I guess is what we're trying to say. And right. yeah, Jeff Wilson, it could just be Mostert and Jeff Wilson when he comes back, at least until HN comes back. So um, yeah, I, I, again, there's not really much to talk about with the Dolphins that you don't already know. So we'll just get into our last game, the Vikings at the Bears. Um, Vikings didn't look great without Justin Jefferson. Like, I don't know. Like, Kirk Cousins, another kind of a dud week. 180 yards and a touchdown. Madison did not look good. 18 carries for 44 yards. Did have four catches, but you're not excited about that. Hawkinson was fine for a tight end. You you know, we were expecting big things from Addison. Like, okay, Justin Jefferson's out. Addison will be good. Only five targets. You know, like, what do you make of this? Are you worried about, like, Justin Jefferson was that important to this Vikings offense that we're in trouble now? Um, I think so. You know, I mean, um, we look at a guy who was all the catches and targets that he got last year and, you know, the last couple of years. So, I mean, the whole offense has got to pivot, you know, away from, from, um, away from him. Just look at, uh, Madison got uh, Alexander Madison got 18 carries, you know, I mean, I mean, that I don't think he's, he's had that many this year. Maybe he has, I mean, his, his production kind of stunk, but, um, so this is, this is what you, this could be the Vikings without, uh, Justin Jefferson, at least for another three games. So. Yeah. I'm worried that, they could do the Cooper Cup thing last year where they just kind of like, now if they're in it, they're not going to do that. Um, and they do have kind of a favorable schedule, I would say. You know, they're, they're um, what are they? What are they? Two and two and four, I think? or Two and four, like yeah. Yeah, two and four. You know, they get the 49ers, but then they get Packers, Falcons. Those are the next three weeks. So, I don't know. I think it's a lot's going to be determined on these next three weeks. If you have Justin Jefferson – I think about trading him because he might not even just come back this year. And you are really hoping that the Vikings win. You know games. what? What if Justin Jefferson decides, oh, my hamstring still hurts, you yeah, know, he because he's contract. in, he's in a, he's in a, he's in a contract year, supposedly. Right. Yeah. Or he's, you know, he's looking for the big money like the other receivers have gotten. So maybe he says, so it's not only the Vikings, Maybe the Vikings, what I could see the Vikings is, oh, trade deadline's coming up. Uh, it's time to reload, you know, get rid of Justin Jefferson, get a bunch of draft capital and, you know, move on. So yeah. there's, um, to me, there's two scenarios there, so. Yeah. Yeah, there is for sure. And that's why. Oh, I and by the way, um, a touchdown one of the Vikings touchdowns was a defensive touchdown. So they, they weren't lighting it up. Nope. And they barely survived. Yeah. Um, on the Bears side, you know, Justin Fields got hurt. Like I think he dislocated his finger. So monitor that throughout the week. That's not good. He, uh, like, he ain't like going to play. It was his right, it's his right hand. Um, yeah. I don't know how you can play with a dislocated thumb. There was a, there was a, um, a comp, a comparison, uh, Jared Goff, I think when he was with the Rams, uh, dislocated his thumb and he was out. He had surgery and he was out two weeks. But I remember uh, him playing, you know, a couple of weeks after that. I mean, he didn't look great. He didn't look terrible. But um, I don't know. Justin Fields, he might be sitting on the bench there, dude. Yep. Uh, the running back situation, they were without their top three guys in Cleo Herbert, Roshan Johnson, and Travis Homer. Um, Deontay Foreman, as we expected, had the bulk of carries, but only put up 65 yards. You know, 15 carries, 65 yards, didn't get a touchdown. It'd be nice to see what Roshan looks like next week if they give him a, the bulk of the carries. You know, DJ Moore, 5 for 51. Like, if, if Fields is out, I'm worried about DJ Moore. Like, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at, um, I'm trying to see who, you know, Tyson Badgett, a rookie, came in and uh, took over. But um, 
I don't know. Like they're, they're they need. I think Nathan Peterman still on the team, so he might be the guy. But I'm worried about DJ Moore. If you uh, and Cole Komet, if you have them, and Fields is going to miss a significant amount of time. So um, I don't know. Is there anything else really to say on this game, Dad? Just kind of a kind no. Of just uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of things hinge on um, on Justin Fields, of course, for the Bears. So uh, yeah, indeed. Well, we'll, um, we'll finish up here and we'll be back with the other seven games as always. Appreciate you guys watching and we'll catch you guys next time.